Welcome to another episode of Tech Bytes, where we dive into the latest trends and innovations in technology. Today, we're exploring the intriguing world of running macOS inside a Docker container. Yes, you heard that right. We'll discuss how this blend of virtualization and containerization works and what it means for developers and tech enthusiasts alike. So imagine you're a developer and you need to test software on macOS, but you don't want to invest in a Mac. What if I told you that you could run macOS virtually on your machine using Docker? Pretty cool, right? This technology opens up a myriad of possibilities, so let's break it down. First off, let's talk about the setup process. To get started, you'll need to use Docker Compose, which is a tool that allows you to define and manage multi-container Docker applications. You simply specify a few key details in a configuration file, like the version of macOS you want to run, the amount of RAM, CPU cores, and even how much disk space you need. You can choose from various macOS versions, from Ventura to Monterey, depending on what suits your needs best. And for those wondering how to connect to your new macOS environment, it's as easy as firing up your web browser and navigating to a specific port. You'll be greeted with a friendly interface that lets you manage everything, including the disk utility, to set up your new virtual machine. Imagine, in just a few clicks, you have a brand new macOS installation ready to explore. But of course, like any tech endeavor, there are some prerequisites. You'll need to ensure your machine supports KVM, which allows for hardware acceleration. This includes checking your BIOS settings and making sure nested virtualization is enabled, especially if you're running Docker inside a virtual machine. It sounds a bit technical, but once you get the hang of it, each step becomes second nature. Now, what about those of you who may want to adjust your container's resources? No problem, you can easily customize your setup, resize disks, add more CPU power, or increase RAM capacity all through the environment variables in your configuration file. It's really all about tailoring the experience to fit your needs. And one more exciting feature, USB device pass-through. This allows your virtual macOS instance to access physical USB devices on your host system. Perfect for developers who need to test on real hardware. But all of this does come with a disclaimer. Apple's EULA specifies that Mac only to be installed on authorized Apple hardware. So while technically you could run this on any machine that meets the requirements, it's important to adhere to licensing agreements. As we wrap up, let's think about the implications. Running macOS in this manner not only democratizes access to Apple's ecosystem, but also helps streamline workflows for developers who work across different platforms. It's a remarkable way to blend flexibility with power. So what do you think? Could running macOS inside Docker change the landscape for developers? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this innovative approach or any experiences you have with virtualization, and containerization. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Tech Bytes. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this episode interesting, be sure to share it with your tech-savvy friends and keep the discussion going. Until next time, happy computing.